Welcome back to the fourth episode of our series, Cost Management, How to Build Your Financial Model. Today is the second part of the planning and budgeting, top-down approach. So for better understanding of the practical application today, it's highly recommended to watch the first part. As you see, and as we said last episode, in the top-down approach, we begin our sales planning at the total available market or TAM. Then the company current market share. And finally, the total company revenue. Another way, you can begin at the economy level, then the industry level. And finally at company level. Also, we stated that if supply is more than products demands. The top-down will be the best fit approach to be used. Let's see step by step. Our busy year is the current year, 2022. For better understanding about the busy year comparison and forecast, please watch the second episode of this series. Let's start with the total available market. TAM is the total available market for your product or service or the entire potential value of the overall market. It will be dependent on following. Market production capacity is the actual production of all companies in the market based on their full production capacity. In other word, the production quantity that is supposed to be produced when the factory or plant is fully operational. Regardless of sales or market demand, this quantity our company can gain if there were no competitors. Market consumption is the total actual market demand for a product or service. It may be more or less than the market production capacity. Idle capacity is the difference between theoretical capacity and actual production due to decrease in demand. So, the total available market can be the total anticipated market consumption. Also, for some industry can be calculated by multiply number of current customers in the market. By the annual contract value, which is average sales price for the market multiplied by contract quantity. But what about total available market growth rate? This is the growth rate for the total available market, not the company share. It is the anticipated growth in the market demand by customers at future. There are many ways to calculate the growth rate, for example, average growth rate over time. By comparing the growth rate of last two years, Another way of calculation is the annual average growth rate or AAGR. It is calculated by comparing the changes in growth rate that take place over many years. For me, I prefer this one. Also, you can apply the growth Excel function or compound annual growth rate CAGR by using XRR. I will try to show you how to calculate it and using this Excel function. But in separate episode, just follow our new series, Excel for FB and A and Cost Management. Note, in the practice, you may have different growth rates for each product. It is better to calculate each product growth rate separately. Then calculating the total average growth rate. The second step is to calculate the company market share. Firstly, you will calculate company share percentage as it's shown in row 6. By dividing the company actual sales quantity from last year. Divided by the industry's addressable market TAM from last year. This percentage will be your company market share from last year. This will be 11% as it's shown. In the assumption sheet you can easily calculate the growth of market share as change in the company market share. And finally, you can calculate company share as a quantity by multiplying the company share percentage 
multiplied by total available market TAM. Now it is the time to calculate the revenue or the sales amounts by multiplying the company market share quantity by the product unit prices. To calculate the prices growth rates, you can follow the same way of calculation as per the market growth. By using the simple way of average growth rate over time. Or the AAGR by comparing the changes in growth rates over many years. Another way to calculate the growth is the top down growth. But it is rarely used in practice because it is a sophisticated approach. To calculate it, you will multiply the market growth by the growth of the company market share then multiplied by the growth of company orders. You will need to combine the growth rates as shown in the formula bar. Now you have the gross sales amount or revenue as a total. Also, the actual revenue per TON. And you can calculate and forecast your costs. Both of variable costs and fixed costs in order to calculate the contribution CS ratio. And the final EBITDA, or the earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. And the EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes. This will be the most complicated stage, with a lot of multilevel calculations, estimations, forecasting and negotiation with other departments. In this stage you will need to use the inflation rates in your calculation. These all will be discussed in the next episode about forecasting and rolling forecast. Now it's time to ask the experts. After discussing the top-down approach of planning and budget, the question is, do we still need budget? We asked Asif Masani the following question. Is the budget still needed or budget is dead? His answer was, The traditional budgeting is no longer relevant in today's world. That's true. However, it isn't dead. I believe it has simply evolved. While the methods may be different, and it is more integrated, agile, collaborative and technology-driven, the basic principles are still the same. Traditional budgets are like driving, Looking at the rearview mirror versus connected planning is driving looking through the windshield. Planning is still essential for any organization who wants to be successful. But the question now, is the top-down approach still useful to be used in planning and budget? Or do we need a new approach? By the end of one of his article, Anders asked are you taking a bottom-up or top-down approach? Anders in the article discussed an important question, how are companies currently managing planning, particularly in such a volatile business environment? In the article comments you will find one of the interesting discussions between Alia Abdullah and Anders. Alia stated that, Mostly top-down on our end, since the pandemic Anders. However, I have realized communication hasn't been the most practical under a top-down perspective. Why? Because of export representatives who may have direct information on SKU from different markets. This is why it feels as if a hybrid approach between top-down and bottom-up has also worked to a certain degree. Outside of this, then I'm all for top-down within the last two years. But Andres replied that I think for operational planning you need a certain aspect of bottom-up. I struggle to see why it is necessary for financial planning though. In the article itself, Andres stated that he recently spent half a day with some of the leading companies in financial planning and analysis. We specifically asked them what they have learned about financial planning and analysis in the past years and how it has changed the way they approach their standard practices on planning. In his article, 
He confirmed that we need a new approach and as we have highlighted in our series, planning as we know it is dead, we recommend taking a driver-based approach. Here you will employ top-down forecasting and shift the dialogue from what the number should be to how we can realize, or even beat, the number. It's the only way to give management a reasonable view of expected future performance in a fast-changing world. Now we may ask, what are the common assumptions we can make in modeling, and how we can think about and validate the assumptions we use? In one of his posts, Paul Barnhurst answered this question. He mentioned some of these common assumptions, for example. Model length, how long should the model be one year, two, etc. Model frequency, monthly, quarterly, annual. Growth rates, what rate will the revenue or expense grow at? Inflation rates, annual inflation rates. Over the last year, this has become more important than ever. WACC, project hurdle rate required. And various key drivers. Another important question for everyone who prepare a budget is, what risks should be considered when building your financial model? Should budget assumptions be changed to accommodate these risks? Especially during times of high inflation, do we need to consider the unplanned slow growth and high inflation, or in other words, stage inflation? While reading James Rimmer articles and posts, you will realize the fact that businesses are struggling to keep up with the cost of inflation. In one of his posts about what do you do next? He stated that the complexity of decisions will be increased during times of high inflation. Whilst influencing direct costs can be really difficult, I'd recommend starting with some detailed scenario planning to fully understand the impact of the decisions you are faced with. Also, in another post James talked about the risks that business leaders are worried about. And how to build each of these risks into the forecast. Some of these risks are spiraling inflations, increasing interest rates, and unplanned slow economic growth. How long will they last? What scale will they reach? So, as a budget preparer you can't plan with accuracy. You're spending hours revising your forecasts only to get another price demand. And your board expect you to give them a straight answer on the actions you are taking to control costs and margins. In the next episode, we'll discuss the forecasting process in general. Also, we will show you the rolling forecast sheet in our financial model. Also, don't forget the second episode of our series, Excel for FP and A and Cost Management. We will show you how to calculate the growth rate using the growth function in Excel. Also, the AAGR and CAGR using XIRA. See you.